Okay, my friends, this is Crowley Lake, and I uh, suspect this is not what they suspect it is. Now, let's listen to what uh, this uh, lady has to say. This is Los Angeles Times, and she's going down We're here there. on the east shore of Lake Crowley, and I am studying these amazing columns. Robin Wom. They're volcanic features. They are in the Bishop Tuff, and there's great mystery about how these columns formed why they persist despite pretty major erosive forces, wind and water, sediments blowing. Aside from their obvious beauty, I mean, these are, these are purely architectural elements. They look like something you'd see in the Roman ruins of Turkey. They are a great mystery. We, we really don't understand uh, why they are here and, and not very many other places. And that, that mystery really, really drew me in to want to study them. I'm a scientist, and I love answering questions and solving problems. And these are perfect problems to solve. But aside from that, they are, they are kind of magic. Uh, the sense of space created by them and how they use the light, they are pretty magical. If she's really interested in solving problems, I'd like to discuss it with her because I think I can show, and I'm going to show you right now what I think they are. All right, let's take a look what I think. Okay, my friends, once again, we have an issue with uh, mainstream's interpretation of what we see. Now, this is Crowley Lake, and this is a graduate student, Robin Wom, and they have decided they solved the mystery of the stone columns at Crowley Lake. Well, I say uh, they did not. Okay, my friends, I, uh, I, I had tried to get a hold of all these people and nobody, um, I couldn't get a hold of anybody, let's just go with that. Now, this, uh, these columns are spectacular products of a natural experiment in physics of hydrothermal convection. They think this all percolated up and caused these things. This guy's name is Noah Randolph Flagg, 25 PhD candidate, lead author. Now, he says the blast, 2,000 times larger than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helen, and he's speculating all of these things, caused this ash to fall. Then he said researchers not only discovered the origin of the columns, but also learned a great deal about surrounding landscape, how it formed and all that. They have a lot to tell us about what the region was like before and after the caldera exploded and about how volcanoes can change local climate, he said. Well, there might have been a volcano there, I don't know, but that's how it formed those things. He says the columns began forming as snow melt seeped into the still hot tuft. The water boiled and made it spin and all this stuff. Well, I'm not going to bother going on with this because it's, it's, uh, it's complete nonsense, really. I mean, I hate to be nasty uh, like this, but nobody will discuss anything once they make a determination. It's totally, it's absolute nonsense, really. Okay, that is what I'm claiming that they are showing there. However, in human hair and in human skin, there are sweat glands. What they show there has no sweat glands, and that's why it's not the kaolin clay. It's some other form of skin, very similar, but it had more uh, grittiness to it. This is absolutely spectacularly fine skin. All right, this would be more along the human line, where this is the hair, and I'll show you this uh, anatomically, and that's what they find right next to them. It's the sweat gland. Uh, I remember I showed that big hair coming down with the blobs going across it. That, that there they are right there. Now here's your your sweat glands coming up in here. Now of course that's the hair and it's it's got that little well we know what it looks like. And right down at the bottom is your your vein and artery which I showed you. That's that little hair that I showed you coming up through the muscle what it is I'm sorry that's exactly what it is and at Crowley Lake this is what you see on the shoreline all of that bubbled up looking stuff it looked like like pieces of the hair well it might be but it's it's also this which is the lower tissue that's a subcutaneous layer that also hardens up that's what happens all right, anybody that's been here, 
for long enough knows exactly what that is. That is the hair. This is flesh. This is the roots. Which is one side is going to be the artery and the other side is going to be the vein. Alright, here's a guy digging out some of the sweat glands. And there's hairs in amongst here too. Okay, now let's just follow her back through here. Remember, there's going to be no sweat glands. The, here's the hairs, the same hairs. Well, they're, you know, their hair is similar. And this is more of a gritty texture. But it, it's uh, very, very similar to uh, kale and clay. But see it here? There's more... There's more grittiness to it. I can, I can see why they would say it was um, pumice. But it's it's not. It's it's obviously not. And it, nothing caused these things to wiggle their way through. I mean, come on now. <laughs> Honestly, no. This right here is that subcutaneous layer. You see, it's below where. It, well, you saw what the atom, anatomical look is, and um, this is just all eroded off the top. Now, if you go to Tyson's site, you it'll blow your mind. He's got membranes. I'm going to just show you a couple quick ones and then we'll go from there. Because it, it has to be taken into account now. This guy's a PhD. I don't want to hurt him. I'm not try, trying to cause him any distress. But he should want to know the truth about what his, his trade is. And they all should. And I'm telling you, I don't think they do. I really honestly don't think they want to know the truth. Just what I found. Okay, my friends, are Roger once again from there and here to re-educate mainstream geologists like my friend Paul, who is a very skilled geologist in the old geology, which is not real. So I'm to bring him into the world of reality. And uh, so, Paul, keep your eye on this, okay, my friend? Now, this is kaolin and clay, Paul, and here's the deal with kaolin and clay. That is actually blood that's still in this kaolin and clay, and kaolin and clay is skin. It's from skin, and um, it's, it's, it's dense with aluminum, right? So, and this is another issue that I have with the medical people. They don't, they, oh, you can't have aluminum in your body. You can't have, well, obviously aluminum is coming from somewhere. It may not be free floating in your body, but it's damn sure in your skin. All right, that is body skin. That's the outside layer of your skin. It's very, very um, fine, and they make fine china out of it because it's uh, it's called bone china. <laughs> now it's it's so fine, it's because it's the, the the fine part of skin. All right, it's not grip skin. Grip skin's a whole different issue. All right, now down in Georgia, they have the the real kale, and I mean it is just as white and fine as you can get, and uh, they call it the white gold. <laughs> and um, let's take a look at that real quick because because I can find it with the blood still in it. Obviously, it's skin, so there was blood there, and uh, it's going to be found here and there within this clay. You know, they they keep it out of there usually, but I'll show it to you. All right, this is kale and cow, and they call it either way, and it still has some red blood in there. And, um, you know, obviously there's going to be here and there, and a little tiny bit up here. They don't normally sell it with this, because people eat this, and they use it for cosmetics. They use all kinds of things. It's very slippery and slimy. It's luxurious on your skin. And they eat it. People eat this. Animals eat it. It's in, um, down in uh, Haiti, they make cookies out of it, and the kids eat them. It's, there's nutritional value in there. Somebody sent me something, uh, well, let me show you about uh, cauliflower. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what they said. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but somebody sent me this, and they said this was regular um, uh, cauliflower, and this, they put kale and clay over here, because it is, it's so, it's, um, 
all of your body chemistry is what grows plants. As I, uh, as I will show or have shown, I'm going to do um, and make some mud fossils. Oh boy, I said the word. And that's what the kaolin does. It makes these little sheets and these absolutely fabulous platy polar silicates. And, and they end up making, you know, it's, it's just as fine and slippery as can be. That's uh, electron microscope stuff. This is way down. But that will all turn into like, a, they call it slip clay. Because it's just, it just slips. It's luxurious and creamy and like fabulous for your uh, skin. It really is. It's skin. It's the finest of skin. All right. Kale and clay, and I don't care what anybody says, that is the skin clay. Look at this, four aluminums, boom, 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 boom. And it's also got four silicons, boom, 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 boom. And the other ones are uh, OHs. Now, we're loaded with, sil with, uh, <laughs> with silicon and we're loaded with aluminum in our skin. Now where did that come from? And in the surface of the earth, I believe aluminum is third, hold on a second, I'm pretty sure in the crust of the earth, which is, everything I'm saying is 100% biology. So if the, a third of the crust of the earth is aluminum, that means a third of the, <laughs> I mean that's, that's, we got a ton of aluminum in us, a third of us pretty much is aluminum. You know, of course, it's on the surface of the earth, and then in these creatures, the surface of the earth is their skin. Because it's so thick and de deep, as you could see with Crowley Lake and everything, you can dig down 30, 40 feet before you hit flesh. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's so far beyond anybody's imagination, I can't, I can't help you in that realm. I can only show you what is, is, is obvious. But so hard to accept. All right, I'm just going to run through this real quick. This is aluminum associations. Obviously, it's in their interest to say what they have to say for their benefit. But it's the most common metal found within the Earth's crust. Eight percent of the Earth's crust is, is aluminum, but it never occurs in its own metal state. It has to be reduced a couple of times from the bauxite state. And uh, at one time, it was more precious than gold and silver until they figured out this Bayer and then this Hall process. Uh, it was more precious than gold or even silver. Napoleon served state dinners on aluminum plates like it was a big deal. And at that time, it was. They didn't know how to reduce it. So, um, but aluminum is in your body. And it's, it's in this state that it's not metal. It's in a state that it's in your skin, in this kale and clay. See that? It's like the skin of the earth. <laughs> Aluminum is the most abundant metal in the earth's crust. It's skin. It is never found free in nature, so it's always bound to something. All of the earth's aluminum has combined with other elements to form compounds. Skin. Two of the most common compounds are aluminum or alum, such as potassium aluminum sulfate. Now that's probably what they have there, and aluminum oxide. We didn't have any potassium in the kaolin. We have, um, it, there's no potassium, I don't think, in kaolin. Really, all you find is uh, about damage to the skin and how antiperspirants have uh, aluminum in it and uh, um, but aluminum I mean it's a third of this this earth's surface so I'm telling you you have a ton of aluminum in you where'd it come from well it's from the things you eat but it's it's bound to other things somehow you're getting it into your skin all right, the kaolin has aluminum instead of potassium, and um, and it makes the china clay and the slip clays, and it is your skin. That's just exactly what it is. It appears odorless, white to yellowish or grayish powder. Contains mainly the clay mineral kaolinite, which is aluminum silicates. 
hydrous aluminum silicate kaolite has well you don't care about all this stuff anyway uh, it's um, is insoluble in water but darkens and develops an earthy odor when wet it doesn't really it's it just becomes slippery it's a slip clay uh, kaolin is a mixture consisting principally of the mineral kaolinite and containing varying amounts of other minerals such as all of these things which is feldspar quartz all of the same things that are, are, are in the mud pile. Uh, you know I said that word also known as China clay, kaolin is a soft white clay, is essentially ingre essential ingredient in the manufacture of China porcelain. It's usually widely used in making a paper, rubber, paint, drying agent, many other products. It has a role as an excipient and an anti diarrheal drug. It contains kaolinite. The Indians used it forever, all the indigenous people, and they still do, they still eat it. People eat it all over the world. Okay, here's the skin, which is the aluminum silicate, which is kaolin clay, and down here of note is, listen to this, very interesting terminology drying out the kale and clay because what they do is they make it into strips of leather literally and then they create pottery with it exposure at the, below 100 degrees celsius 212 fahrenheit exposure to dry air will slowly remove liquid water from the kale and the end state is referred to as leather dry <laughs> If you go above that to the 550 degrees Celsius, 1000 degrees, any remaining liquid water is expelled from the kaolite, and the end state is referred to as bone dry. <laughs> Leather and bone. Well, they, they, somebody knew what they were talking about.